So I've been sent a new story. Let's have a look and see what you think. The Shipwrecked Sailor. Many years ago in ancient Egypt, a huge ship sails into a grand harbour. After many months of sailing, it has finally made it back home. Excitedly, the crew tie off all the sails and make sure that the ship is anchored properly so it won't float away. Once the ship is secured, the crew start unloading all the cargo onto the docks and they have lots to carry. The ship has come back from a place called Nubia and the sailors hope to make a lot of money um, with all the cargo they bought there. The crew is very excited to be home. After having a long and hard journey, all they want to do is see their family and friends and spend their wages on beer and meat. As each sailor finishes their duties, they almost leap off the ship with excitement to be home. However, not everyone is happy to be back. Inside a fine luxurious cabin, a high official of the Pharaoh of Egypt is frightened and hiding. The Pharaoh had sent him on a very important secret mission and he sat silently on his bed, almost shaking with fear. He had failed his mission and was very frightened of the consequences of this. How angry will the king be? How will I be punished? He thought to himself. Just then, the first mate of the ship is doing his final rounds to check everything is okay so that he can leave. But then he enters the high official's cabin. He is shocked to see the official sitting on his bed. My lord, forgive me for not knocking. I had expected you to be gone. I was carrying out my inspection. I fear that bad things will happen to me if I leave this ship. I was sent to Nubia by the pharaoh himself. I have failed the task he set me and now I fear for my life. Pick yourself up, my lord. You are the high official of the pharaoh. This is no way to behave. Clean yourself up and go see the pharaoh. We have had a long journey. He will be pleased to see you. Answer his questions truthfully and all should be well. The high official did not move a muscle. As you wish, but staying here, it will make the pharaoh more angry than if you tell him the truth. I have to inspect the rest of the ship. But know this, when things look as worse as you can imagine, good things can happen in the end. Something similar happened to me a long time ago. Listen while I tell you my story. A long time ago when I was sailing on a great green ocean, on a ship much bigger than this, which needed 120 people to sail it. A wonderful crew they were, strongest and bravest that I had ever sailed with. For many days we sailed in calm seas with a strong wind behind us, when out of nowhere a tremendous storm erupted. We were miles away from any land as the skies grew black as night. Thunder boomed all around us as lightning struck the sea. The waves became fierce demons, the likes of which I have never seen. Every time the waves smashed into the boat, they seemed to grow in size. The boat was rocked violently and there was nothing we could do except hold on to the ropes with all our strength. Then a giant wave swept over the whole ship and the mast snapped off and plummeted onto the deck. This was the end of us. The ship sank. The rest of the crew drowned in the black ocean and I was the only survivor. The currents in the ocean carried me further and further out to sea far away from the sunken ship and it finally brought me onto an island. I was washed up on a beach and I managed to crawl my way onto the shore. I was so tired and frightened that I took shelter under a grove of trees. I lay there for three days and three nights. On day four I summoned the last of any strength I had left and got to my feet. I was starving. I had to find food. I was in luck. The island was covered in food everywhere I looked. There were grapes and many kinds of vegetables. The sea was full of the plumpest fish I had ever seen. Oh my, did it all taste wonderful. To this day I have never eaten a cucumber as fine as what I found on that island. I ate until I could not move. Then I heard a rumbling and the ground began to shake. 
Trees splintered around me, and I flung myself to the floor in fear that the storm had returned. I clung on with all my strength to the ground, terrified a wave was going to carry me out to sea. When I looked up, I froze in fear. Something far worse than a storm was in front of me. A gigantic golden snake was staring down at me with its eyes locked into mine. I was convinced it was going to attack. This was not a normal snake. It was incredibly long, eyebrows made of bright blue stone, with a long beard hanging from its face. Hiss! Why are you on my island, sailor? If you do not tell me, I will kill you. I told the snake my story, and he lowered his head and put his mouth around me. I feared for my life. He carried me to his nest, and he put me gently on the floor. Then he spoke again. This time the snake sounded calm and kind. Again the snake asked me why I was here and who brought me to the island. I explained in every even more detail this time about the ship and all the crew that died. Don't be frightened, sailor. The gods have saved you by bringing you to my island. I shall not harm you. This is a ghost island. You shall find all you need to live here, and I shall look after you. You will stay here for four months. Then a boat from your lands shall arrive to take you home, and you will live a long and happy life with your family. Then the snake grew sad, and a teardrop fell from his eye. I also have a sad story to tell. This island used to be full of snakes like me. My whole family lived here. There were 75 of us living on this island. My wife, my daughter, my brothers and their wives and children. We were happy, but one day when I was out hunting, a giant meteor struck the village and everyone except me was killed. The village was burnt to the ground and I was the only one left alive. I found it very hard to stay in this world, but I had to, for the memory of my family, and clearly the gods had more planned for me. I promise you this, if you stay strong while on this island, you shall see your family and friends again. O oh, mighty snake, when I reach my home, I shall tell the pharaoh of your kindness, and you shall be rewarded greatly with the finest jewels of my lands. Everyone will hear your kind act. The snake hissed with laughter. I know you cannot afford these fine rewards you tell me of, and I have no need for them. I am the Lord of Punt, and have all the oils and jewels I could ever need. Knowing that my story will be spread amongst your people is reward enough. When you leave this island, it will vanish, and you can never return. Just as the snake said, after four months, a ship landed on the island and the sailor was given many grand gifts by the snake. As the boat sailed away, the sailor looked back at the island and before his eyes, it began to fade away until it vanished. Two months later, the sailor made it home and gave all the snake's gifts to the king, the pharaoh. He saw his family again and lived a long and happy life. The tale of the golden snake was told all over Egypt and is even told today. Having heard this tale, the high official still looked sad and did not move a muscle. He was not brave enough to try and make the best of a bad situation. Then he said with great bitterness, Do not try and help me, my friend. My doom has come. <laughs>